This video continues on the same model as we used for the simple series variable video. First we can rearrange a bit here. It's of course better to have the input at the left along with the variable. We can put this timetable under here and give some more space to it. We can also make this variable permanent, meaning we can run the model several times and get the same result out of it. As you see here, we have an increase of 5 with some variation at the start. The next time I run the model or reset it, it is reset to 5 because that's the definition here. So on the advanced tab, I can say I want this to be permanent. Then I can change the input. That's also the case for normal variables, not series variables. And I can run the model and you see we get one behavior here. Then I can run it again without losing my input. That is because it is now permanent. I also want to speed it up. You see now it is simulating slowly because I slowed it down when we had a slider as input here. So I go on simulation settings, say maximize speed. Then by running it, it goes much quicker. As you see, this time series variable will have all the elements even when the model is reset. You see now the level, that's a normal variable, it only has one value at the moment. After running it, it has all the values. Here it's also summarized on each month, but the change over time is already present at the start because this is a time series variable. It is not present on the level. So as you see, you can use the table as input directly. When pressing enter here now, this graph will jump to zero for that element. Same I can do here, give some high value, 10 for instance, then it jumps to 10 and so on. I can also use the input here to change both the table and the graph. But as it is now, I have to press the run button each time after making a change. I look at that one and I run it again and again, perhaps make a change. I also have to reset the model before being able to change it. Sometimes I may want to make all the variables in a model series variables. I can make feedback. I can do most of the things I want to do in a normal model with series variables. So let's try that. In this case, I simply convert this one to an average series variable. Then I get the message that this one must be a series variable as well. So I choose this one as a first series level. That is most similar to a non-series level. So now the change is after resetting, you see we may get some strange values. At the moment we change a variable to a series variable, but that's simply solved by resetting the variable. I can also press F9 to rescale this graph. You see now it's auto scale. By pressing F9 or this auto scale button, it is rescaled. With this change, I don't have to press the play button anymore. As you see, when changing the input, it changes the output immediately because they are all series variables. So this could be one feedback. There could be another feedback in another part of the model. I can even look into the future in the first feedback when doing calculations in another one. This is how simple it is. Now all variables here are series variables. But then, what if you don't want a time input to your model and still want series variables? Of course you can do that. Let me show you and also make some feedback into this model. Currently it's only a calculator. If this is not a change, but your goal like this, and you want it to be only one value. You want it to be the goal 50 liters, not liters per month. This should be a direct goal. Then we need to change something here. When I have a goal for my level, I also need a time to adapt to this goal. So I make a new constant, delay for gap, and I connect that. And I also need a link from the level to this right. My definition should be the difference between the goal and my level divided by this delay time. Then I give a delay time of uh, four months. Now you see, I get a question mark here. I have made a correct definition here, I hope. <laughs> But this is still wrong because all series variables, they need startup variables as input. So even if this is not a time series variable, I have to say it's a startup variable. That means I can only change it on the initial time step. 
in this case i also want to say this is a scalar value with no time input so i cannot use this one for now but i put a few sliders in here to say that i want to see my goal and i want a slider also for delay time so now i have a time series model with simple traditional inputs i can change delay time and i can change my goal very simple of course if i want my goal to be a time series i simply go in here and say it's average then we can skip this one or let's view it zoom a bit out here i put back this uh, graph and say the goal should change from here for instance there you see it changes let's put some scaling here as well one two five then you see it goes steep or smooth into this trench and we can change it this for instance or you see it's a very simple model and we never need to press the play button if looking at this value goal so if making it decline like this for instance and running the model it went down then up a bit and at the end you see it lost its value you can also look at the off report there's no valid value for goal for this period and that's because the period we are currently in is january 2013 and we are here looking at the average value for january and we haven't simulated more than one day into january that's why it cannot calculate an average value for that one so you will often see in off reports if you run the model to the end, many of the variables, they will have unknown values at the end. But again, you don't need the auto reports that much when using time series variables. It's much more useful, for instance, using this value inspector, looking at all the different values. This one has only one value, as you see. But the calculated values, you can see each step in this table. Also, of course, for the level. That's the same as you see here in the graph. Thank you for watching.